This is breaking news from News Channel 11. Patients in a Tri-Cities dentist office bolt for cover as a man opens fire, killing his wife. With lives at risk, a patient with a carry permit taking swift action, shooting the man and holding him at gunpoint until police arrive. We're live at the scene tonight with the very latest. Good evening, I'm Blake Lipton. And I'm Ann Carter. Many people, including Sullivan County Sheriff Jeff Cassidy, hailing that bystander a hero tonight. The shooting taking place in Kingsport just before lunch. It happened at the dental office of Dr. David Guy on Clinic Way. That's where our team coverage begins this evening. We're now joined by our very own Josh Smith. He's live at the scene with the full recap of what we now know right now. Well, good evening here from Colonial Heights, where police have cleared the scene. No more crime scene tape around this dentist office. Sure. This is breaking news from News Channel 11. We begin this evening with breaking news. Virginia Governor Ralph Northam admitting to taking part in a disturbing photo that recently came to light. Good evening. I'm Ann Carter. And I'm Blake Lipton. This news breaking just moments ago. Take a look. The Virginian pilot said it obtained a copy of the photo Friday from the Eastern Virginia Medical School Library, which Northam attended. It appears to show a picture of a person in blackface and another wearing a Ku Klux Klan hood next to different pictures of the governor. Now, Governor Northam admitting to taking part in the photo earlier today, saying in part, quote, Earlier today, a website published a photograph of me from my 1984 medical school yearbook in a costume that is clearly racist and offensive. I am deeply sorry for the decision I made to appear as I did in this photo and for the hurt that decision caused then and now, end quote. Northern has recently come under fire from Republicans for supporting looser restrictions on late-term abortions. We are continuing to follow the latest updates to this breaking news, and you can find full details on our website, WJHL.com. A local Tennessee lawmaker is working to improve school bus safety for students. State Representative Matthew Hill of Jonesboro introduced a bill that would increase the penalties for drivers who ignore school bus signs to a Class A misdemeanor. The legislation comes just months after a 10-year-old boy was hit by a car while trying to board a school bus in Washington County, Tennessee. Now, Caroline Corgan spoke to Representative Hill, who says that incident is what encouraged him to file this bill. For Representative Matthew Hill, it's been a chilly past few days in the Tri-Cities region between snow and those frigid temperatures. It can have you asking, what is next? Well, this furry guy may have your answer. There's a lot at stake tomorrow, and you know how it goes. If he sees a shadow, it means six more weeks of winter. We're all counting on him to make the right choice there. <laughs> and uh, regardless of what happens, our storm team says we're in for a pleasant weekend compared to what we felt earlier this week. Hey, we certainly are. The good news. Com. A recently released study revealed 69,000 Tennesseans are at risk of losing their health insurance if work requirements are added to the state's 10 care program. Last year, state lawmakers approved adding work and education requirements to 10 care. The proposal would require able bodied 10 care recipients to work an average of 20 hours a week. Federal officials must approve the measure before it goes into effect. The study by Georgetown University and the Tennessee Justice Center looked at federal data and the results of work requirements in other states. Researchers said mothers who make up 77 percent of 10 care recipients would be hardest hit. Julie Whitaker, who cares for her child with severe medical problems, would be one of them. Some months I can work, some months I can't work at all. So this would very much impact me. Supporters of the added requirements say the changes would pull people out of poverty by pushing them into education and employment. We have got a beautiful weekend on tap, so maybe some of the ice in this beautiful picture here from Amanda Barnett. Bay's Mountain today may be melting, though. We're talking highs in the 60s next week. You can always send your pictures to us. Pix, P-I-X at WJHL.com. We'll be right back. See, that message was removed. Thanks, Blake. Student athletes from all over the country are in the spotlight today, signing on that dotted line and advancing their careers on the field and in the classroom. We have a recap of National Signing Day coming up. It was a busy day around the area with student athletes from various points and sports putting pen to paper on National Signing Day. We'll begin in Unicoi County where Brett Strother kept his commitment and signed with the ETSU football team today. For his career, Strother rushed for 3,190 yards and found the end zone 34 times. 
On defense, he had 188 tackles, 10 tackles for a loss, and two interceptions. In Elizabeth Betton this afternoon, Garrett Jennings, the Cyclones' 6'7", 317-pound offensive lineman, kept his commitment and signed with Eastern Kentucky. And the Dobbins Bennett Indians' Cade Saliers, with family and friends looking on, Signed with the University of Richmond, the 6'3", 306-pound offensive and defensive lineman was the District Lineman of the Year. Had a career 59 knockdowns and 69 blocks that led to touchdowns. And that's just to name a few. We have a full list of today's signings on our website, WJHL.com. Just click the Coach's Corner section at the front of the page. Well, it may have been overshadowed by National Signing Day, but today also holds a celebration just as important in the sports world, National Girls and Women in Sports Day. It's a day to recognize female student-athletes, coaches, and administrators who are at the top of their games on the field, in the classroom, or the community. Student-athletes like Courtney Whitson, the Dobbins Bennett basketball player, recently made her mark in the history books. Whitson became the school's all-time scoring leader with 2,234 points in their game last month against Rogersville. But today isn't all about setting records. East Tennessee State University redshirt Mike, Micah Sheets saying if it weren't for her parents having her partake in sports as a kid, she wouldn't have the great opportunity she has today. My parents put me in it super young just because they both played and I had a bunch of family members that played. And it's given me a lot of opportunities. I've met some of my best friends playing basketball and I've got to travel and see um, different parts of the world. And so here's to all the young ladies and women out there giving it their all for the team and bettering themselves on and off the court. Well, tax season is upon us. Pretty much all of us have to do it. Whether we want to or not. Yeah, I don't want to, but we are in your corner answering any tax questions you may have this Friday. More details coming up. And no need to grab your coat or sweater tomorrow. Our storm team says we're in store for a treat in temperatures. That accurate seven-day forecast just ahead. You're watching News Channel 11 on ABC Tri-Cities at 630. Snow continues to fall all across the Tri-Cities region. And our storm team says this winter weather system is expected to ha hover over the area throughout the evening. We're in your corner monitoring the conditions and the impact the winter weather is having across our viewing area this evening. I'm Curtis McLeod. And I'm Ann Carter. The ABC Tri-Cities team has what you need to know about this winter weather system. And we deliver live team coverage from all across our region. We begin with Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Mark Reynolds, who joins us now. Yeah, Mark, what should we be expecting this uh, evening? You know, this is a very slow release, and that could cause some travel issues, guys. More to forecast in a few more minutes. All right, thanks, Mark. The Tennessee Department of Transportation crews worked all day pre-treating roads and are on standby to respond if conditions deteriorate. Absolutely. County road employees also stayed busy today. Justin Soto talked with crews in Carter County, and he continues our live team coverage of the winter weather impact on the region. Well, Curtis, and I can tell you tonight that the temperatures have dropped significantly. I've had to put on my hat since I last checked in with you guys and take a look at this. It is officially snowing here in Elizabethan. Reporting live in Elizabethan, I'm Justin Soto, ABC Tri-Cities. All right, Justin, thank you. ABC Tri-Cities' Elizabeth Kubel is live in Kingsport right now. And she is monitoring the treatment of the roads in Sullivan County. It has officially been snowing here in Kingsport, going on two hours area now. right here. As you can see, snow is sticking here. So, Anne, I'm going to send it back to you. But for now, live in Kingsport, Elizabeth Kubel, News Channel 11 in your corner. All right, Elizabeth, thank you so much. And continuing our check across the Tri-Cities, let's head now to Johnson City. Our very own Jordan Moore has been standing by monitoring the road conditions. Jordan. Good evening, Ann. You already heard Justin say it, but we definitely can tell out here it is getting colder this evening. Again, I'm here live in Johnson City. Jordan Moore, News Channel 11 in your corner. All right, stay warm, Jordan. Thank you. Well, the Virginia Department of Transportation says its crews are ready to respond to winter weather, and now there's a tool you can use to track the movement of VDOT crews when they hit the road. Curtis McLeod shows us how it works. 
All right, and take a look here. This is the VDOT snow plowing website. It's actually vdotplows.org and very easy to use here. What you see now is this is Southwest Virginia and it pretty much shows you all of the snow plows and the breaking news from News Channel 11. We begin this evening with breaking news out of Sullivan County. Two people are in the hospital following a small plane crash. Good evening, I'm Sarah Diamond. And I'm Josh Smith. That plane went down just short of the runway at Tri-Cities Airport. Tonight, a spokesperson confirmed the crash happened near runway 23 at the airport in Bluntville around 8 p.m. The plane left Columbus, Georgia earlier tonight around 6.20. News Channel 11 alerted you about the crash through a text alert. We've been tracking updates through the night on WJHL.com. Ashley Sharp is live near the crash scene at the Tri-Cities Airport. She joins us live with the latest. Josh and Sarah, we know live in Bluntville, Ashley Sharp, News Channel 11 in your corner. Ashley, thanks. Now the FAA says the experimental plane is registered to a man from Seal, Alabama. Our sister station in Columbus, Georgia reports the person on the registration is a pathologist and physician at St. Francis Hospital in Columbus, Georgia. We have not been able to confirm the names of the people on the plane when it crashed or their conditions, but we will post any updates to our website, WJHL.com. Earlier today, President Trump uh, traveled to the Carolinas to see the damage from Hurricane Florence firsthand. Thousands there are still without power tonight. The president said a lot of work's been done and more still has to be done. We will be there 100 percent. All of the folks from the federal government that are around uh, the table, uh, they're, they're confirming it. That's why we started early and uh, we'll, we'll be here late. And tonight, evacuees from the Carolinas are still taking refuge right here in our region. Now, earlier tonight, Ashley Sharp found out some locals had to escape flooding as well along the Nolichucky River in Unicoi County. More than a week after Hurricane Florence's initial Sharp News Channel 11 in your corner. Well, thanks to your generosity, News Channel 11 and the American Red Cross have raised more than $15,000 to help those affected by this terrible storm. Yeah, there's still time to donate. Just head over to our website, WJHL.com. Virginia political news tonight. Candidates for United States Senate in that state faced off in a public forum in Richmond. Democratic Senator Tim Kaine and Republican candidate Corey Stewart took the stage at separate times this evening. Capitol reporter Sarah McCluskey breaks down the big issues discussed from the two politicians. Taking the stage of the Virginia... This is News Channel 11 at noon. You are taking a live look at historical Jonesboro right now, and that's where the McKinney Center is hosting a peace walk, which is beginning as we speak. This, of course, mirroring the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s saying that, quote, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. That's Depot Street Park there in Jonesboro. Good afternoon and thank you for trusting News Channel 11 and ABC Tri-Cities at Noon. I'm Casey Marler. Amy is on assignment today. That event in Jonesboro, just one of the many going on today across the Tri-Cities. Today, communities across the country remember the great work of leader, civil rights leader, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The civil rights icon would have been 89 years old if alive today. MLK Day is celebrated on the third Monday in January, and this year it actually falls on his birthday, January 15th. We have a live look at another event happening right now, this one in downtown Kingsport. That's where the Model City is hosting its 18th annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Parade. This year's theme is Answer to Racism is the Love of Christ. If you didn't get the chance to go to either of these events, there's still some time at 1230. United for Change Unity Walk will begin at the end of Greater Love in a few more minutes. Thank you, Mark. Police in Johnson City are already hard at work enforcing a new law that bans camping on city property. That ban went into effect on July 1st, and because of that ban, some area shelters for the homeless are at near capacity. Curtis has more on how police are enforcing this ban and what area organizations are doing for the homeless. Yeah, over the last few weeks in Johnson City, we were monitoring at this issue on Buffalo Street downtown. Homeless individuals have been seen camping out, but now you can't seem to find the individuals in that particular area of downtown at all. Police have now began enforcing a ban that won't allow camping on city property. This guitar. We may still see a chance to snow Monday. It's a little out of that. Our producer Dan has a new puppy, but uh -huh. he loves going out in the rain. Yeah, I'm sure he does. Yay! Thanks for joining us. Have a great night. See you.